We're on our way to check out the very first property that we ever saw because our realtor wants us to take another look and see if it's a viable option. One thing that really strikes us is that the drive is so beautiful and so peaceful. The ground is really, really lush and when it turns the fall season, a lot of these leaves will turn color and it'll make for a really beautiful drive. Just look at these views. Good morning, we are on our way to see the very first property that we saw a couple months back. It's still on the market, it's still overpriced, and we originally thought it wasn't going to work, but uh, we have since talked to an engineer and we're talking to the county and the property may actually work. And so I think there's gonna be a really a good opportunity for us to get this property at a good price and do something that's a little bit scaled down, which may actually be better for us given that this is gonna be our first time taking on this kind of project. So we will see how it goes. One thing we really love about the drive is that you go through a super cute and quaint town and it just gives that sort of charm, that old world charm that we're really trying to capture with our retreat. I mean, just look at how amazing these old homes are and how enchanted our guests are going to be. I really can't wait to get these structures up. Now this is the drive up to the property. We've turned off of the main road onto the side road that's gonna lead us to the driveway. As you can see, it's super secluded. There are no neighbors really nearby and there's just lots of space and lots of nature for our guests to enjoy. We are back at the very first property that we saw a couple of months ago and it is still on the market, and that's because it's overpriced. One thing is that the home, the way that it's currently configured, is a one bedroom. People are not gonna pay $700,000 for a one bedroom house. It's just not gonna happen. So it's been on the market for over 100 days, which I think plays to our, our favor. We actually think that what we wanna do is going to be possible here. We wanna build what's called a rustic retreat, that's what the county considers it. So the plan would be to create six small cabins in this clearing. And we're thinking four small A-frame tree houses and then two tree houses that are in the style of the Bolt Farm tree houses and the Wanderlust. And the great part about it is that this land is already cleared. So there's really not much we would have to do. We could probably even retain those trees. Now the challenges of this property one you may not be able to tell but it's it's a little bit of a s downward slope and there are limitations on how much slope you can have and put in a septic system which is uh, basically to capture all of the sewage we just have a couple of logistical things that we need to work out before we can put in an offer because those things really would make the project viable so one the question is, can we put in the septic, which is the sewage system that we would need to put in for six cabins? Are they just gonna let us do that, period? And then the second related question is, can the soil handle that type of sewage system? And to know that, we would have to do what's called a perk test. And that measures the rate at which liquids will filter through the soil. Now, if the soil is too rocky, it'll filter too quickly and it won't give time for the liquids to, to clean themselves out. So unfortunately, the county may require us to wait until at least February to run that perk test, which we're in the beginning of August right now. So that's six months. Is the seller gonna wanna wait that time? Well, they haven't gotten an offer so far. So if they have a buyer, maybe they'd be willing to play ball. So we have our fingers crossed that perhaps we can work out a deal. We're in conversations right now with the county to see about that perk test because that's really the major question if if we can get that done and it's a it's a positive result we'll buy this property so we're just gonna walk through a little bit and show you what we're thinking here's the house it's a log cabin style it's in really good shape for what it is and it probably just needs cosmetic work and then on the inside if we can we would convert a lot of the space into more usable space like bedrooms i think we can add at least three bedrooms but that's gonna depend on the type of septic we have and can it handle the amount of sewage for a four bedroom. So we'll see. 
With this barn, we see a lot of possibilities. We could create it as additional hangout space for our guests, or we could turn it into event space. And we're leaning toward event space with possibly catering toward weddings. And we could offer the barn as the place for the reception and for dining. And then we could also offer space in our cabins for people to stay. So it could be an all-inclusive weekend for wedding parties. Now we're gonna proceed inside the house. And one challenge that the house has is that it's been converted into really a one bedroom home. And I think that's a huge part of the reason why it hasn't sold because most families are looking for multiple bedrooms and they don't necessarily want to have to buy a home and then do a lot of work. A lot of people want something that is move-in ready, which most people call turnkey. So a home like this really is best suited for investors like us because we have the time um, and we have the money to be able to do the type of remodeling that would be required to bring this home up to date with both the remodeling work that would need to be done in addition to adding in any additional bedrooms. So you can see that the home's floors are original and they're in pretty good shape. The walls are in good shape and you have this paneling on the bottom half of the walls that I think could easily be removed. And for the most part, it's just cosmetic. It doesn't smell musty or like anything has had any water damage inside the home it's just out of date you see those are some baseboard heaters that we would have to rip out and replace put in a brand new heat and ac system one big bummer is that staircase that leads upstairs eats up the whole middle of the home but i think it would be way too much money to take that out so we'll probably just leave it as is i would remove that little island that's there obviously keeping that big structural beam that's in front of it um, to maintain the structural integrity of the home. But other than that, I would just take off the wood paneling and put a fresh coat of paint. I would probably also paint that fireplace to just make it look a lot more modern. We would have to put in all new kitchen cabinets and countertops and a sink. And there's Chris there. He's the genius in terms of figuring out the layout and what the kitchen would look like. So probably where he's standing, we would just replace that with a brand new kitchen island. So now I'm heading upstairs, which is where the bedroom is located as well as the only bathroom in the home. That's another big challenge that this home has is that it's only got one bathroom which is not what families need. They need at least two bathrooms, at the very least one and a half baths so that you have multiple options for people. But it looks like it is in pretty good condition. The walls are in good condition, the paint is in good condition, and it just needs updating. And in here, we would probably put up walls to create a bedroom where those two windows are. And then we would probably put a bedroom right here where I'm standing, which you, you can't see too, too much of it, but, um, we would put a bedroom there and okay so right there where chris is standing we would probably create another bedroom this would be another bedroom and then on this floor we would have a total of three bedrooms this is the existing bedroom in the home and it is attached to the only bathroom in the home and i mentioned before that we would probably be putting in an additional bathroom you really want to follow the lines of the plumbing so we would put the additional bathroom downstairs in that general location of this corner of the house. And if we were to put a bathroom upstairs, which I'm not sure we would, we would do because I don't think there's enough headspace for it, we would put it also in the same location. So in a moment, I'm going to head upstairs and show you the attic, which I think could be converted into an additional bedroom and it could be pretty sizable. We would have to put in insulation. It was pretty hot up there when I was there. And that's because heat rises. And when there's no insulation, the heat is beating down from the sun and it is radiating off of that metal roof and it's just staying there. So we would need to insulate so that you get better temperature control. So now we are in the basement of the home. And one thing that our realtor is talking about is that they put in a French drain system. So there was water coming into the basement. This is a pretty common issue for homes in this area. And in order to keep the basement nice and dry, they put in this, this drainage system and they also have a dehumidifier going to take the pull the moisture out of the air. And 
This is the second time we had seen this home and the first time we came, I think that that French drain was new and we could still smell the mustiness of the moisture that had been in the basement and we didn't uh, sense that now and that's great. It means that the water issues have been completely mitigated in the basement. So here's what would be the backyard of the home and you can see there's this nice little clearing area which would be perfect for a hot tub and some additional hangout space. So now I am just looking at the porch that is right off of the main living floor of the home. We would retain all of that, all of the charm that it has, and we would just um, update it and replace the screens. There also seem to be a number of birdhouses around the home. And so that white post there that you see is one of the birdhouses that lacks the house. But that is the end of the tour of the inside of the home. Hello. So we are recently back from checking out the very first property that we went to go and see. We have to get then a site plan from an engineer done who's gonna map everything out and account for everything that the health department and the planning department are gonna require in terms of the sewage, the plumbing, the electricity, the setback from the road for the buildings. So that would be a couple month process. Once we have that, we have a perk test and then we have a site plan then we can submit the application to the county for the special use permit. And then they have two separate application processes. One is 100 days and then one is 120 days. So I think we are probably nine months from now before we would have a site plan, assuming we pass the perk test. And then from there, it's going to be 220 days. So that's nine months, that's 18 months before we get a building permit. And then it's probably gonna take at least a year, if not a year and a half, then to get the structures built. So that's why it's going to take so long. But the the upside of it is, is that we're essentially taking raw land and we're building all of this value into it. And that I think is going to make this business by the time we're done with it worth several million dollars. And for that, you just have to be patient. You have to go through the, the steps to get this done properly. So. I hope that you enjoyed our tour of the property and you learned something. If there's anything else about glamping that you want me to talk about, let me know. My link's down below to become an Airbnb host and you will get $75 cash back when you host your first guest and I'll be your ambassador. I also have links down below for all of the items that I use to furnish and decorate my Airbnbs that I love and I recommend. Thank you so much for watching today's video. Bye-bye.